Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and let me say I am so sorry. I bought a new headset because I left mine at school and didn't want to drive all the way to naughty Illinois from Indiana as I make these on the 4th of July, and realized that the new headset has a much better microphone that you could hear, so I apologize for screaming and the 4th of July music at you. So we are down to Kid Rock and all summer long to go through these things. We're going to learn about phase diagrams. We're going to learn about vapor pressure and the definition of boiling, endoexothermicity of phase changes, and that we already did. So let's hope for a short podcast with less loud, annoying music. So let's get in. Phase diagram. OK, this is a phase diagram. Notice pressure is on the left and temperature is on the bottom. Yes, draw this. Draw it. OK? You need to be able to figure out where the three different states of matter are. So if I think about my states of matter, I should think about which one is probably the hottest. So over here, temperature, hottest, hottest, hottest. Over here, it looks like, I don't know what SCF means, but this is the hottest. And which would be the lowest pressure? That means the most spread out. So this is a gas. Now what's the coldest state of matter? Do, 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 do. Hey, this is the coldest state of matter. That would be a solid. And then we're left with a liquid. Okay. There's several points on this graph that you should know. This right here is called the, well, we'll go to this one first. This one right here is called the triple point. Just label it. And this one right here is called the critical point. And then to make some sense out of these lines, believe it or not, we know that solid to, well, solid to liquid is called melting, right? Anywhere on this line, where you go from solid to liquid, it's melting. Okay? So on this line, on the line, both states of matter exist. So that means on this line, there are solids and liquids at the same time. On this line, and by the way, it can go both ways, because liquids can freeze. On this line, they can change back and forth. And this means that both states of matter can exist there, too. Whoa! And on this line, both states of matter can exist here, too. Whoa! And guess what happens at this point, at this triple point? All three states of matter exist at once. Whoa, that's crazy. Critical point is where any hotter, and there's so much kinetic energy, it must be a gas. Now, Mr. Fowley's bias here, I think it should be a critical line, because notice it's a line. Any hotter than this, it has to be a gas, but it's called a critical point, because it doesn't matter what the pressure is. It has to be that way. So remember, you can change the state of matter of something by changing the pressure or changing the temperature. So if I'm right here and I'm a gas and I want to make it a solid, I simply increase the pressure. And that does not I didn't change the temperature at all. I just change the pressure. Is a melting point really a point? No, it is a line of temperature and pressure through those. To find triple point, hey, I just did that. To find critical point, looky, looky, looky. Normal boiling point is the boiling point at one atmosphere of pressure. Boiling point changes with elevation. The person I learned podcasting from is from Colorado Springs, Colorado, unless he was burnt away into nothing with these terrible fires. And it, he always talked about how when they boiled water, and everybody knew this, when you boiled water, it was at 92 degrees Celsius. So, you know, our water boils at like 212, whoops, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Their water would boil 92 degrees Celsius is something like 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So I didn't do the math at all, but it's less, so I just guessed. Um, but it's significantly less where you're going to notice that difference. Okay? So that change in elevation, because they live on a mountain, born on a mountaintop in Tennessee, which meant nothing to anyone except for Ms. Bernuscus. If I'm boiling water here, this fire, okay, normally there's a column of air that is keeping, oh, I missed my arrow that is keeping things in the liquid state of matter. Notice there's a big column of air pushing that water to keep it from boiling, turning into a gas. Here, that column of push is significantly smaller, so it's easier to boil. Death Valley, normally if you know this is sea level and you've got this valley all the way down here, the column of air squishing it is bigger, so boiling point goes up. 
So an amount in boiling point goes down. Water has an odd phase diagram. It has a negative slope. This is the melting point slope. And notice it has a negative slope. Most things have a positive slope. Water has a negative slope. What this means is, if you increase the pressure on a solid, it will melt. So that means that ice floats. So remember how ice makes that beautiful ring? If you step on that ring and smash it, it'll turn into a liquid by increasing the pressure. Okay? Ice expands and snow tracks. If you have the unfortunate job of being the snow shoveler in your family, um, if there's nice fluffy snow and then somebody steps in it, and there's nice fluffy snow, this part is the worst part to shovel because what happens is um, snow is easy to shovel, nice fluffy crystals, aren't they beautiful? Every snowflake is wonderful and original. As in that, we learn that's not quite true from Imagine, but eh, close enough. Um, so it squishes it down and it changes from you know, snow to water, liquid water, and then that, because it's cold outside, turns into ice, which you have to chip away with a chisel. Vapor pressure is the pressure of an evaporated gas back on the liquid in a closed container. So if I have something with a lid on it, which then that lid is solid, some of the particles will evaporate. When those particles evaporate, here's my three particles, because they can't escape, I'm going to make my container actually a little tighter now, they will exert a pressure back down on the liquid. So if this particle right here, I'll make it an X, tries to jump up, there's a particle right there to go, bam, <laughs> smack it right back down into the liquid state. The definition of boiling is actually when the vapor pressure, pressure exerted by gases above it, equals the atmospheric pressure. And my last question is how do you make something boil cold? Lower or drop the pressure. Phase changes are energy changes. Solid to liquid is endothermic. Okay? has to absorb energy. When you melt ice, it's absorbing energy from the surrounding areas. Okay, energy is going into the ice to make it melt. Liquid to gas is big endothermic because they have to absorb a lot of energy to make a liquid turn into a gas. Gas to a liquid is big exothermic because you're releasing a lot of energy from one to the other. That's why steam burns, we'll talk about this in class more, cause more damage than H2O burns, H2O liquid burns. And liquid to solid is exothermic. It releases energy. So if you have a liquid in it and it's um, freezing, um, that is exothermic because it's giving off heat to do that. Endothermic bonds are broken. Exothermic bonds are formed. Review. Hey, we're done already. Are you kidding me? They were so long. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Phase diagrams are a Y. Remember? Temperature is the X axis. Hey, that's temperature. Pressure is the Y axis. Um, think of extremes to ID it. So again, think where's the coldest spot? Where's the lowest pressure spot? Or ID it, which would be space. Doesn't matter. And water has a different slope. Remember, water slope is R. Uh, vapor pressure affects boiling point and sublimation point. I think burn, but steam burns more. And I will say very hot and 103 degree in Indiana. Toodles to you. Bye.